Hello everyone, it's Heather. We have reached the end of 2022. This has been a very big year for our family. We had some pretty big things happen in our family. One was Megan graduated from high school and she started college. Another was that we sold our house that we had lived in for almost 20 years and we moved to our new home where I am now. Thanks to the money we got from the sale of our house, we also did an unprecedented amount of traveling. We actually traveled in every month of the year except for February and April. So this was a lot of traveling for us and I know that I had a lot of content, a lot of travel content this year, which is great for me. It's also a lot of work for me because it's a lot of videos to edit and get published and everything. This was an unusual travel year for us even though I make a travel channel. So in 2023, you're gonna see that scaled back a little bit more because I just can't afford to keep up that pace of travel at this time. Hopefully in the future, maybe in 2023, my channel will really explode with growth and we'll be able to travel as much as we did in 2022. That would be fantastic. If you wanna help me on that journey, help us to be a little bit more secure in our finances, you can help us out by watching my videos, by liking, commenting on my videos, and by subscribing. So if you're not subscribed and you enjoy travel content and you enjoy our videos, if you watch my videos on any kind of regular basis, please be sure that you subscribe. There's all sorts of stuff coming all the time. I always put out a minimum of about two videos a week and recently I've been trying shorts, so I've actually been putting out four to five videos a week if you count the shorts. So. You don't want to miss anything, so make sure you're subscribed and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss anything. Okay, today's video is kind of becoming an annual tradition, and I hadn't actually planned on doing it this year, but I got some viewer requests that said that they really enjoyed this video that I've done in the past, and they were looking forward to seeing it again. So, in today's video, I'm going to share with you my 2022 favorites. Now, in this video, I'm going to share with you five things, and I tend to do travel and entertainment, I guess is what it is. I'm gonna share with you my favorite hotels, my favorite trips from 2022, and then my favorite books, my favorite movies, and my favorite live shows or live theater that we saw. Now, I don't think I included live shows or live theater the past year or two because of the pandemic, and we really didn't go to anything, but I thought I'd put it back in there for this year. So. The first thing I'm gonna start out with, because this is a travel channel, I'm going to start out with the travel stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna start out with is my five favorite hotels. And we stayed in hotels so much this year, I actually spent, think we spent about a third of the, the year in hotels. So we stayed at hotels a lot this year. We've still not quite reached diamond status with Hilton, but we're very, very close. We have very high gold status with Hilton. We stayed at some Marriott properties a lot too, some other, other brands here and there, but we stayed in a lot of hotels and I actually had to go back and look at my own videos <laughs> to remember all the hotels we stayed in. So I'm gonna give you the top five for each of these categories today in this video. So here's my top five hotels. However, I did have a tie. So you're actually going to get my top six. Okay, now within the top five, they're not in any particular order. These are just the five that I liked the best. All right. They might be kind of in date order, actually, chronological order. Okay, the number one hotel that I liked the best that we stayed at this year was actually a hotel that we were not planning on staying at that we left a different hotel and switched to. And if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it up here so you can go back and watch what I'm talking about. Okay, this was the Courtyard by Marriott Anaheim Theme Park entrance. This is a hotel at Disneyland, basically. So this is when we were in Disneyland in January. We were staying in Anaheim, and we had originally been at the Homewood Suites, which is a Hilton property, and we did not like that room, that hotel at all, and we were very unhappy there, and it was too far away from the parks. We didn't have our rental car anymore, and there was no way I was gonna be able to walk that distance with my bad ankle. So we switched on after one night at the Homewood Suites to the Courtyard by Marriott, and we were just so pleasantly surprised by how nice that hotel was. It really restored my faith in Marriott properties because I've had some not so good experiences with Marriott, and it really made our overall stay at Disneyland extremely pleasant. It was just a really nice property. I really liked the rooms. It had two showers. It had 
two queen beds and bunk beds. It had a nice little booth in the corner. It was just a really, really nice property. It was a full service property. It had a restaurant. It had a gift shop. It has a water park. It was closed while we were there, but we didn't use it anyway because it was too cool. But it was just a really nice hotel. And if you're looking for a place to stay at Disneyland, I would highly recommend it. It is a little pricier, both because it's so nice and because of its proximity to Disneyland, because it's really close. It's right across the street. So, but it's one I would highly recommend and I would definitely stay there again. That was one of my favorite hotels of 2022. Okay, another favorite hotel, which is kind of a surprise because it's, it's getting up there. One of my most popular videos now is my review. And I'm just baffled as to why this one is so popular. It's our Spring Hill Suites room tour and review in Rentham, Massachusetts. Okay, that's not the hotel I liked. I actually didn't like that hotel. I mean, the hotel itself, the property was fine. I do have some issues with the design of Spring Hill Suites rooms, the suites themselves. They don't have enough places to put your luggage is a real problem. And I don't like that they use that translucent door on the bathroom. Now this room was basically identical, this one that I'm gonna say is one of my favorites, to that one we stayed at in Rentham, Massachusetts. It was a brand new property, had just opened, and I feel like the location and the particular view that we had and the staff and the service that we got there really made this a really excellent hotel. And the other reason this was such a favorite of mine in 2022 was because of the ease of access to the tea and our ability to get in and out of Boston easily. So it was the Spring Hill Suites Boston Logan Airport Revere Beach. It's north of Boston, it's in Revere Beach. It's right on, it's not on, it's across the street from the beach, but you can see the beach from the ocean view rooms. You can't see the beach or the ocean from the sides or the back of the hotel, but we had an ocean view room. It was really, really lovely. And because it was a brand new property and it had just opened, it did have some quirks. They had some trouble with the elevators and things, but it was also very, very nice. And the staff were phenomenal. And we just had a really positive experience staying at that hotel. Then I'm gonna give you my tie. My tie is for two different properties that we stayed at right before our two cruises in 2022. We took two cruises in 2022. We went on Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas over Megan's birthday right at the end of May and into June. And then we went, Ben and I, just Ben and I, went on the Disney Wonder out of San Diego in October. Okay, and the hotels that we stayed at right before each of those cruises were two of my favorite hotels. Before Harmony of the Seas, we stayed at the Hampton Inn and Suites Cape Canaveral Cruise Port. This is actually two Hilton properties together in one building. It's a Hampton Inn and a Home Two Suites. To home Two? Yeah, the Homewood Suites was in a separate building, but it was right next door. So you have all three of those options really close together. A Hampton Inn, a Homewood Suites, and a Home Two Suites all together in the same little area and the two of them are together in the one building and have share a kind of a common public area downstairs, which the public areas were very nice. It also did have the opportunity, we didn't use it, we parked someplace else and then took the parking lot shuttle to the cruise ship, but they did have a shuttle that you could take directly from the hotel to your cruise. It just had a lot of really nice amenities and it was a very nice, I think it was built at the beginning of the pandemic. It was a very nice hotel and really new and the suites were big and it had a nice pool and it was just a really nice hotel and I highly recommend that if you're going on a cruise out of Port Canaveral for either before or after your cruise. And then the other one, the one that Ben and I stayed at in San Diego before we went on our Disney Wonder Cruise in October was the Hilton San Diego Harbor Island. Harbor Island kind of sticks out in front of the airport there. It's like a dead end. It's, it's a little I don't even know how to describe it. Look at a map. It's cool because you get really good views from Harbor Island of downtown San Diego. And you can also see the cruise ships going right past you. The Koenigsdam, Holland America, I think it was Koenigsdam, went right past us in front of our hotel. We could see it from our balcony if we wanted to. So, and when we came back on the Disney Wonder, we went right past this hotel. Like, I mean, it's really close. So your views are really great. And this was, you know, this was a full service Hilton, regular Hilton hotel. It was a weird shape and kind of confusing sometimes when you got off the elevator, but we had a very nice view out of our room and was nicely appointed and it was just a really nice hotel. So, 
and a, and a decent location. I mean, you kind of had some parts of San Diego one way and other parts of San Diego the other way. So it was kind of a good location and also very convenient to the airport. So the Hilton San Diego Harbor Island. So I would recommend either of those if you happen to be visiting, you know, Port Canaveral or going on a cruise out of Port Canaveral or if you happen to be staying in San Diego, even if you're not going on a cruise, because this actually wasn't the best location for going on a cruise. There are closer hotels to the San Diego cruise port, but just if you're staying in San Diego, it was a really nice option. So Hampton Inn and Suites Cape Canaveral Cruise Port or Hilton San Diego Harbor Island. I'm gonna give those two a tie. Okay, fourth favorite hotel in 2022 was the Family Suites at All Star Music at Walt Disney World. This was another very pleasant surprise. This was a very last minute booking. We flew down there, I think on a Sunday and I booked it the Wednesday before. I think that's what it was. And these all new Family Suites, which they basically combined two value resort rooms at All Star Music together into a suite. It has a kitchen. It has a couch, that can, a sofa that converts into a Murphy bed. It has a table and chairs that also converts into a Murphy bed. It has two separate bedrooms then. It has two bathrooms. It was really nice. We really, really love when we can get a room like that where we can each have our own bed. That is a huge bonus for us. You're gonna find this to be true as your kids get bigger like mine. If When your kids start to be adults, nobody wants to share a bed anymore. And I don't blame them. I don't want to share a bed with anyone either. It was just a really well done room. They, they did a great job. And we actually really enjoyed our stay at All Star. And I didn't expect that because those are literally the lowest value resorts that Disney has. That's, those are usually the cheapest. Is All Star Sports, All Star Music, and All Star Movies. And I had never stayed there before. And because we had that suite, we just really enjoyed it. We really had a very good stay there and it was a really nice room. Again, it was pricier. It was like 300 something a night. So not really value resort pricing, but it was a really great room for us and we were very pleased with it. Okay, and then my fifth and last favorite hotel of 2022 was the Hilton London Heathrow. <laughs> okay, we were only there for one night, but oh my gosh, I wish I could have stayed there longer. I had my best night of sleep in any hotel anywhere in 2022 at the Hilton London Heathrow. The beds were just heavenly. <laughs> okay, and this was the, again, we had three beds. This was a connected family room. One room was a, I think a queen bed and its own bathroom. And the other room was two twin beds and its own bathroom. And one bathroom had a tub and the other bathroom had a walk-in shower. This was perfect. I've just found it to be so worth the money for us as my kids have become adults and gotten bigger, you know, teens and adults. That extra bathroom really helps. It's really nice to have two bathrooms. And again, having those separate beds for all of us really helps. I definitely have to pay for it because these rooms are hard to come by. And the fact that I found this one at the airport because it was the night before we were flying to Boston, from London to Boston to then go see my son Andrew. It was a terrible time getting there because it was a horrible rainstorm in London and there was a rail strike so we couldn't take the train. Our flight was too early in the morning so we couldn't take anything in the morning because we wouldn't, nothing was running early enough. And so it was really tricky to get there. We ended up taking a taxi and it took almost three hours because of the flooding on the streets and the intensity of the rainstorm and traffic and construction. So that was a bear. But once we got to this hotel, this was just a very nice, again, full service Hilton with a full service restaurant. We had dinner there. It had just really nice amenities. And these, the room was very, very comfortable and the beds were great. So those were my top five plus one <laughs> hotels in 2022. Two Marriott properties, three Hilton properties, and one Disney property were my top ones in 2022. I would highly recommend anybody stay at any of these that I mentioned. We had a great stay at all of them. My top five trips. I ended up breaking up. I counted. We actually probably took 11, 12 trips because there were times you know, like we went to Minnesota and stayed in hotels too. I divided up our big trip in August. We were gone for almost all of August, but we stayed in four different places. We stayed in Paris. We stayed in Switzerland in Lucerne, 
We stayed in London and we stayed in Boston. We went to four different places. So I actually could count though. I counted each of those segments as a different trip because otherwise I only had like seven. <laughs> so to give you the top five didn't make a lot of sense, but with everything and all the traveling we did in 2022, these were my top five favorite trips. Number one was our trip in January to celebrate Megan's early graduation from high school. We went to Los Angeles. We did a whole bunch of movie things. We went to Warner Brothers Studios. We went and found some places where things were filmed from some favorite movies. We went to the beach. We went to Griffith Park. We just did a whole bunch of stuff around Los Angeles. And we then we went to Disneyland. And that was a really great trip. We all agree that that was one of the best trips we've ever had and one of our favorites. And Ben actually says... This is his favorite trip of 2022, even including the Disney Wonder Cruise that he and I took together in October, which is, that's my favorite trip. But this one was way up there. We definitely had a great trip going to LA and Disneyland. If you want some tips on how to do a trip like that, go back and watch my series from that trip because we just had a really fun time. It was a very positive experience and we liked the hotels we stayed at. We stayed at, I think, three different hotels. Um, we had a rental car. I didn't mind driving in LA. January is a great time for us from Wisconsin to go to California, Southern California, because the weather's great. We're doing it again in 2023. Yay! <laughs> so I'm kind of just going to, I might make that like a fixed thing. Like we need to go to Southern California every January, but it was, that was a really great trip. Okay. Number two was the Switzerland portion of our trip to Europe. London and Paris were kind of a disappointment actually. And the reason they were a disappointment was because of the heat. It was so unbearably hot when we were in London and Paris. It really affected how you felt. We felt sick. It really affected our stamina, our ability to do things every day. You're sweating all the time. I mean, it was really just unbearably hot. And the lack of air conditioning in some European cities is really difficult for us Americans who are used to having air conditioning. I mean, it was, honestly, it was difficult for the Europeans and the British people too, because they're not used to it being temperatures like that. I mean, it was nineties, hundreds, very, very, very hot. And so it was just really difficult. And it was also very, very crowded. And it was also very, very expensive. If I could do that over, I would really like, I don't think I'd have any reason to go back to Paris, but I, <laughs> I really don't. I don't like Paris. But I would like to take my kids back to London because there was a lot we didn't get to on that trip. And there was a lot of experiences that would be better if it hadn't been so hot and so crowded and so expensive. But the Switzerland portion, it was not terribly hot in Switzerland. They also were not experiencing the same drought conditions in Switzerland. Switzerland was very green compared to like France was very, very, and London, all the grass was dead. It was terrible. But Switzerland was very green and Switzerland was much cooler and there were not the horrible oppressive crowds when we were in Switzerland. And my kids had never seen the Alps before. And that was very exciting for them. We got to go up in the mountains and Ben loves the mountains. We got to do some really fun, interesting things when we were in Switzerland and we had a really enjoyable time on the Switzerland leg of our trip. So Switzerland was one of my favorite travel experiences of 2022. Third one was my cruise with Ben on the Disney Wonder out of San Diego in October. It had been five years since I had been, since any of us had been on a Disney cruise. I love cruising on Disney Cruise Line. I love the Disney Wonder. I'd never cruised out of San Diego before or to Mexico. And so that was all new experiences for us. We got to visit a new city. We'd never, well, I'd been to San Diego once before, but it, I didn't get to see any of it because that was when my dad got sick and basically almost died. The weather was really nice. It was just a lot of fun. We had a really great time on that cruise. We had a really great time on that trip. And I enjoyed the cruise immensely and ex I'm extremely excited about my next Disney cruise. So I, that was one of my favorite trips was our cruise in the Disney Wonder in October. And then I had to kind of really think about what I wanted to put for number four and number five. And I kind of think of these as like two halves of a full trip, but in two completely different seasons. So number four, I'm going to say our trip to Walt Disney World in July. And I never thought I would say that because it was so hot. <laughs> it's so hot in Florida in July. But we had just a great time on that trip. And that was a very last minute, like I mentioned earlier, unexpected trip to take. 
and we weren't planning on it. I mean, it was just something we decided to do because we were taking my dad down to Florida to see my uncle who was ill, you know, kind of a spur of the moment thing. It was my first time renting a car and driving myself around Walt Disney World, which I really enjoyed. And that was when we had that um, family suite at All Star Music. And we really liked that. And we just had a really fun time going to Disney World. I almost think like the spontaneity of it and the fact that I didn't like over plan it for months on end ahead of time actually made it kind of fun. So I really liked that trip. And then number five is when we went back to Walt Disney World in November over Thanksgiving. Terribly, terribly crowded and pretty expensive because of how much we had to pay for Ginny Plus and the individual lightning lanes and stuff like that. But we again had a really good time because we'd never been to Walt Disney World at Christmas and everything was decorated for Christmas. We got to experience the festival of the holidays at Epcot. We got to see all the big Christmas trees. We got to go to Mickey's very um, merry Christmas party. So that was really fun. So we went to just Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom in July and spent some time at Disney Springs. And then Ben and I went to Magic Kingdom, Megan didn't get to because she flew down later because she had school still in November. And we went two times. We went to Magic Kingdom one day and then we went to Very Merry Christmas Party the, a different day. But then all of us together, we all went to Epcot and we all went to Hollywood Studios. And Ben and I actually went to Epcot twice. So we actually got to experience Epcot in between festivals. And then we got to experience Epcot on, I think it was the first day of the Festival of the Holidays. And we got to go to Candlelight Processional, which is something I never thought I'd get to do. So both of those trips were really great experiences, really fun trips to Walt Disney World. Really made me realize how much I really do like visiting Walt Disney World. Even with the changes and everything, I just, I still really have a great time. So those were my top five travel experiences in 2022. What about you? Share what your top travel experiences in 2022 were down in the comments below. Okay. Let's go to entertainment. I'm going to start with live shows because some of these kind of go with, I'm actually including shows we saw on cruises and shows we saw on at Disney World because we saw the Candlelight Processional, which I would consider a live show. I mean, it's a concert kind of thing. We went to Drawn to Life at Disney Springs. I'm going to tell you basically all the live shows we saw. So those two. On Harmony of the Seas, we saw Grease, their production of Grease, which is like a Broadway style production. In London, we saw Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at the Palace Theater, both parts. In London, we also went to Come From Away. In Boston, we saw Anastasia. And then on the Disney Wonder, we saw The Golden Mickeys, Frozen a Musical Spectacular, and Disney Dreams. And then like I mentioned already, we saw Drawn to Life at Cirque du Soleil at Disney Springs in November and we saw the candlelight processional at Epcot in November. So those were all the live shows that we went to in 2022. And I will tell you my top three. One was Harry Potter and the Cursed Child in London. That was a phenomenal production. It's long. It's two full plays. Basically you start at two o'clock, I think, and you get done around like eight 30, nine o'clock at night. There's a break in the middle. So you can go have dinner. It was just really, really well done. It was very, 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 very hot, and I don't think it was very air-conditioned in there, but we, you know, the darkness of the theater, eventually it kind of settled down, and you weren't dying or anything, but we had really good seats. We had a really good view. It's a really cool production, you know, because it kind of takes the story forward. Very well acted. I, I mean, production quality was amazing. The lighting, the special effects, the sets, the actors, everything. It was really, really good. And it's suspenseful and scary and intense and funny in parts. And it's a really great show. So if you ever get the opportunity to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, especially in London and especially in the two parts, they do have another version that's only one part kind of condensed in New York City. And I don't think that would, I don't know what to think about that. If you've seen that or if you've seen both and you can compare them, let me know. Okay, the second one that I really, really enjoyed that was one of my favorites was Anastasia in Boston. I had been wanting to see Anastasia for like three years. It was one of the shows that we had tickets to at the beginning of the pandemic and it kept getting changed. Um, I ended up selling my tickets to a friend because at the time that they finally did have it, I still wasn't comfortable going to a theater. Omicron was very bad and we weren't comfortable doing that. And so... We didn't go to it in Minneapolis like we had planned to. We ended up seeing it in Boston. I really enjoyed that experience because 
the Boston Opera House. Is that what it's called? The theater that we went to was amazing. Oh my gosh, that place is beautiful. I want to go back there and see something else with Andrew just so I can go to that theater. And the theater really went with the show because the theater was built at around the time that that show takes place around the time of the Russian Revolution and the years afterwards in the 20s. It was a really good show. I've always liked the movie Anastasia and I really liked this theatrical production of it. It was very well done and I really enjoyed it. We all did. Okay, and then my third top show that we saw in 2022 was Frozen a Musical Spectacular on, on Disney Wonder. I have seen that show before on Disney Wonder five years ago I just really like that show. I love the way they do it. It's really cute. They use puppets. They use puppets for little Anna and little Elsa. They use puppets for Sven. And the way the actors that are doing the puppet do it, I don't know how to explain it to you. You have to see it. It's so cute. It's just, it's so well done. And the the sets and the the costumes and the everything in that production on the ship are so cool. I really, really enjoy Frozen and Musical Spectacular. I'm very excited to see, I think we get to see Tangled in a similar production style on Disney Magic coming up here in 2023. Frozen and Tangled are two of my favorite Disney movies. So I really enjoyed that show on the ship. So those were my top three favorite live shows of 2022. What live shows did you see? Leave me a comment below. Okay, movies. <laughs> we finally got back to seeing a lot of movies like we usually do. We are very frequent moviegoers. We go to a lot of movies. The owners of our movie theater here in town know us very well. We've had parties for my kids, birthday parties at the, at the movie theater. We've, we go to movies a lot. I really love going to the movies. I don't particularly like watching movies at home. I prefer the full movie going theatrical experience. I am filming this video on Saturday, December 17th, 2022. Tomorrow, I'm driving to Minnesota to pick up Megan from school and then pick up my son, Andrew, from the airport, who's coming home to visit. So they're coming home for Christmas. And there's a few movies that we'll probably go to together that I haven't seen yet in 2022, particularly Avatar, Way of Water. We're all going to together next week. And we're hoping to see maybe Babylon. Megan and I can't quite tell if we'll like that or not. And also The Fablemans, the one by Steven Spielberg. That hasn't come out around us yet. And our movie theater, I asked them, they don't know if they're going to get it or not. They won't know till Monday. So those are three additional movies that I'll probably see yet this year that are not on my list. And so I can't give you an opinion on those, but that I'm planning on probably seeing. Okay, but these are the movies I did see in 2022 so far. Spider-Man No Way Home, Moonfall, and I saw all of these in the theater, by the way. Death on the Nile, Uncharted, Coda, The Lost City, Fantastic Beasts, Secrets of Dumbledore, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, Downton Abbey, A New Era, Top Gun Maverick, I saw in the theater three times, Jurassic World Dominion, we saw in the theater twice, Lightyear, Elvis, saw in the theater four times, including in London. Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, Super Pets, Where the Crawdads Sing, See How They Run, Avatar 3D. Our movie theater in the next town over re-released the original Avatar in 3D for people to see before the new one comes out. So that was really great because then Ben got to go to it in the theater, which he was too young when it came out. So I don't even know if he was born yet. Ticket to Paradise, She Said, which was excellent, by the way, very important movie. And Strange World, Disney's newest movie. So those are the movies I saw in the theater. So you can see, I go to a lot of movies in the theater. And actually, even this is still kind of light for us. The reason we went to Top Gun, Maverick, Jurassic World, Dominion, and Elvis multiple times in the theater is because, in a lot of cases, we wanted to go to a movie and there was nothing else out to see. So since the pandemic slowdown and shutdown of movie production... It's still kind of still working its way to get back up there to the full level of production of new movies. Now, I have looked ahead to 2023. There's a bunch of movies coming out in 2023 that I'm very excited to see. And it looks like it's going to be a little better. So I think it's going to, you know, ramp back up over time. But 
21 different movies that I saw, not counting the multiple ones, but 21 different movies that I've seen so far in 2022 in the theater. So you can see, we usually go to a movie, you know, at least a couple times a month. And in the summer and at the holidays, we usually would go to a movie pretty much every week and sometimes more than one a week in past years before the pandemic. So we enjoy the whole experience of going to the movie theater and we really feel very strongly that it's important to support your local movie theater. I haven't, <laughs> I didn't do the list <laughs> of my favorites <laughs> because I was kind of waiting to see if I went to any more before I made this video. But I would have to say, it's pretty obvious that the ones I went to multiple times were probably three of my top five favorites. Top Gun Maverick, we really, really liked. I really liked how much they referred back to the original Top Gun in that movie. I thought they did that a, a really good job. And I really liked that they, you know, and Tom Cruise said this, that they made that movie specifically for the big screen and that it was in the theater so long so people could have as much opportunity as possible to see it on the big screen. Movies are made for the big screen. They're really not, dis I mean, unless they're made specifically for streaming, you really need to see a lot of movies in the theater to get the full quality of the movie. Okay, Jurassic World Dominion, we really liked that a lot. We saw it twice in the theater. And Elvis, oh my gosh, did we love Elvis. We bought Elvis. That movie, I love Baz Luhrmann. And I know there's, they're ta he's taken some, you know, some creative liberties in that movie and there's some historical inaccuracies and stuff, but, and I know Elvis is a complex, controversial guy, but that was just such an amazing movie. I just loved that movie, how it was done. My kids loved it. I mean, the fact that we went to it again in London and three times around here, and it was just so well done. It was so, I just loved it. I just loved Elvis. If, if you liked it too, let me know. I mean, it's, it's weird. I mean, Baz Luhrmann's style of movies. I mean, and thankfully, before we saw that, I had my kids watch Moulin Rouge. We tried to watch Australia, but I really don't like Australia. And The Great Gatsby with Leonardo DiCaprio. And even if you don't love those movies, just his style and his creative vision, I think is just amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, this is my little side where I gush about Baz Luhrmann. <laughs> but I just love Baz Luhrmann. And I think Austin Butler just did an absolutely phenomenal job as Elvis in that movie. So if you haven't seen Elvis, I strongly recommend you go see Elvis because it was really, really good. But again, it's weird. <laughs> so, okay. I like how they put the rap in. I just love how he mixes, sorry. I love how he mixes in modern songs. Like in Moulin Rouge, he does that a ton. It takes him forever to get the, like the rights to the songs to use in those movies. You know, he makes these historical movies, these dramas that are historical but he puts modern music in them and it just works. It just, it just works. It's just so cool. Okay. Anyway, other than those three, I would say the other ones that I really, really enjoyed, let me see if I can pick two or three more. The Lost City. <laughs> the Lost City was great. If you haven't seen The Lost City with Sandra Bullock and Chan Channing Tatum and Brad Pitt, that movie is hysterical. <laughs> I don't think we saw, oh, we saw that one twice too. We did. I didn't write that down. The first time I saw it, I don't think I've laughed that hard in a movie in years. It, I, it was so funny. Lost City was really good. I really enjoyed, you know, for a, di a totally different thing. I really enjoyed Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. That was a really, that was a delightful movie. That was, a, it was out for like a second. If you didn't see that, try to see that too. So, and we really enjoyed going to Avatar 3D. I did not remember it very well. And Ben had never seen it. And again, I would say she said, very, very well done movie. Really well done. Very important movie. And I'm just going to put a little plug in for Strange World. I actually kind of fell asleep. It, it's a little slow, but the animation is amazing. And the message at the end, because like when you're watching that movie, you're kind of sitting there thinking, where are they going with this? What is happening? I don't understand. It's And when you find out at the end what it actually is, it's really cool. And it has a very good message that all of us need to take to heart. I mean, it actually has two messages. It has the whole storyline about family and the relationship between the grandpa and the dad and the son, but then the overall message of the movie, which you have to see it to find out what I'm talking about, is really important and really cool. So I, I'm sad for Strange World that it hasn't gotten more press and more people haven't gone to it because it's good. So those are all the movies I went to. Okay, last thing, <laughs> books. I read 36, I'm currently reading my 37th novel in 2022. As you can see, I also read a lot. Some years I'll read as much as 50 some novels. Um, it depends on the book 
and how fast I can read it. If I'm really into it, I can read a book in like a week, but sometimes it'll take me like up to a, three weeks to a month to read a book. So it really depends on the book, but I had a little bit of a hard time, but I'm going to give you my five top books of the year. I use Goodreads and Goodreads thankfully ranks like a, I get to rank, I get to rate them one to five stars after I read them. And so Goodreads gives you a thing at the end of the year telling you, you know, what your, what books you read and how many pages you read and what was your shortest book? What was your longest book? And which one's got five stars and all that. So that's kind of handy. Now I feel kind of bad doing this, but th three of these, no, two, two or three of, yeah, are series. Okay. But I would say that all of these authors do a good job of making each book good as a standalone. Like you could read it even if you haven't read the whole series. You know what I mean? These were my favorites of 2022. A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson. This is the second in a series. There's now three. I have the third one on my to read list. I never read the first one and I was fine. You didn't have to read something about Wolverines. The main character in these books is a She's an animal, like a wildlife. <laughs> I don't know. I love polar bears and I feel it's really important that we need to be saving our planet so that polar bears do not go extinct. Polar bears are very important to species and they need the sea ice to hunt from and to feed from and they can't swim across the whole dang ocean, people. So polar bears, I really love polar bears. And this book was about polar bears and the whole first like third of the book was about how the scientists go out and like tranquilize the polar bears and then take samples off of them and study them and track them and all of that. It was really cool and very interesting to me. Like it was very sciencey and, you know, like a biologist. <laughs> and then it's also a really intense, like action movie type book. Like I almost feel like they could very easily make that book into a movie. It was actually almost too actiony for me at a couple of different points. But it was a really good story, really quick read, really enjoyed it, Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson. Okay, second book I really enjoyed was Just Haven't Met You Yet by Sophie Cousins. This is kind of, um, you know, women's lit rom-com kind of thing, although it wasn't terribly funny. It was more serious. And the title doesn't mean what you think it means. And when I realized, when I got to the point in the book where I realized what the title actually meant, I was like, Oh, that's so cool because it doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really neat. It was a really good book. It was a kind of a heartwarming, inspiring. It was a good book. And it's set on one of the Channel Islands, Jersey or Guernsey, one of those. I can't remember which, which is something I've always been curious about. I've read a couple different books set on the Channel Islands now and I just enjoy those. Okay. Number three, Dark Highway by Lisa Gray. This is third or fourth in a series and shoot, I'm going to mix these up, but check it out. Dark highway by Lisa Gray. It's a, she's a private investigator in those books. Yeah. It's a woman private investigator and it's part of a series. Okay. Until we meet by Camille DeMaio. That was a historical fiction book set in world war II, And I'm a big fan of historical fiction in world war II. I just love the World War II era. I love learning about World War II. I have great admiration and respect for the people who endured the period of World War II. And so I really enjoyed that book. That was a really good book. And then my last one, I actually gave it a tie because I read two books in the same series by this author in 2022. Lee Goldberg, who also uh, writes for TV. Um, you may have heard of him. The book that he's, it's Eve Ronan. Yeah, Detective Eve Ronan in Southern California. I should mention that. Those books by Lisa Gray, Dark Highway, in that series, and these books by Lee Goldberg are both women protagonists that are in some kind of law enforcement type capacity in Southern California. And I think that's why they appeal to me. I don't know. Gated Prey, I read first. And then Movie Land, I read second. And I really enjoy this series of books by Lee Goldberg because they are set in Southern California, in the Los Angeles area. It, centers around the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, actually, or LA County Sheriff. Yeah. He includes a lot of real life stuff, real locations, real history of the movie industry and the television and movie industry. 
And I think that's really interesting and cool because I'm very interested in that. So I read both of those books by him in the same series in 2022. So those were my favorite books. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this rather long video. This was a video, again, by request from my viewers, where I sum up my favorite things from 2022. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up down below. Give me a like. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel and you want to be sure not to miss all of our upcoming travel experiences and hotels that we stay at and all of that in 2023, be sure that you are subscribed to the channel and click on the notification bell so you get a notification each time I put out a new video. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, thoughts and comments, your favorites, your best experiences of 2022 in the comments below. I hope that you are all safe and well, that you've had a good holiday season, and that you have a very positive year in 2023. And safe travels.